What is overcriminalization at the federal level? What does that mean? Overcriminalization refers to the plethora of federal laws and regulations that are on the books now that carry criminal penalties. So whereas once we might regulate something and you get a fine for it or you get a disciplinary proceeding by an agency uh, and you get slapped on the wrist that way, now instead we are creating criminal penalties for this thing. So instead, if you violate this regulation, now instead of a civil fine, you get zero to six months in prison and a criminal record. And uh, overcriminalization over also just generally refers to this sort of uh, idea that there are too many federal crimes and that people don't know what is illegal anymore. Harvey Silverglade is a scholar here at the Cato Institute, and he's written a book called Three Felonies a Day, arguing that the average person, uh, most likely unwittingly, is committing an average of about three felonies a day. Uh, it's my understanding Representative Sensenbrenner, who's on this uh, congressional panel that trying to deal with this problem of overcriminalization, has asked for a review of all of these criminal penalties that the federal government uh, heaps upon uh, these uh, infractions. What did he find? Well, he approached the Congressional Research Service and asked them something very simple. Do a tally. Go through the entire federal criminal code and find out all the different crimes on the books. And they said, I'm sorry, we can't. We don't have enough manpower. It would actually take too much time. And that just gives you a small idea of the, the size of this problem and the scope of it. Uh, according to Representative Sensenbrenner and the Congressional Research Service's last number, which isn't even a correct number, there are over 4,500 criminal laws and violations in our federal code scattered through multiple volumes. And that's another problem is not all of the criminal laws are collected in one place. There's no one place you can go to check if, if I do this thing, is this going to be a crime? Th that resource doesn't exist for the American public. To what extent are federal agencies creating penalties without the input of Congress? Well, it's enough of a problem that the Judiciary Committee created this special task force to look at this issue. And the Judiciary Committee is the one that is supposed to look at legislation that creates crimes. They're supposed to be doing studies on it and having hearings and making sure that a crime is really necessary and appropriate. And yet when you have an agency that goes off on its own and creates a criminal penalty, that is not going to the Judiciary Committee. So it, it's often unaware even of criminal penalties that are being attached to regulations in other parts of, of the government. This panel, what, what are they focusing on in terms of trying to reform the problem of overcriminalization? Well, they're looking for solutions that will get bipartisan consent. And I think from the hearing on Friday, the big one that came out was this idea of mens rea. This idea that you shouldn't be held criminally liable for something unless you intended to commit a crime, unless you had a, a bad mindset of, I'm going to violate this law. And the problem with so many of these regulatory offenses is that a lot of people don't even know they're out there. When you get into a world where you have perhaps thousands of regulations that apply to a particular area, you might be doing something and fully believing that it's legal, and you might be doing it with the very best of intentions, and yet at the same time violating the law and there's a criminal penalty attached. And for you know hundreds of years we've had this idea that you, you should have a guilty mind to be punished criminally. What are some examples where this has been particularly egregious? I think some of the areas of um, business regulation, um, particularly uh, if you're doing something where you're bringing in um, say orchids from another country, uh, you have to file special paperwork to bring those orchids in. And if you file the wrong paperwork, there's a criminal penalty attached. And uh, everything else about the orchids may be perfectly legal. You paid for them, you didn't steal them, they're you know, perfectly legal to bring into the states, but because you fill out the paperwork wrong or you don't file the right paperwork, you, you suddenly are facing a, a criminal penalty. I understand that Democrats and Republicans probably have you know, constituencies that are uh, different when it comes to battling the issue of overcriminalization, but uh, to what extent is overfederalization something that they can agree on? When you get to this idea of overfederalization, you have the, the concept that the federal government is prosecuting stuff that the states can handle. 
And um, this could include everything from some of these regulations that we're talking about. Not all of them need to necessarily be federal regulations. The states can handle some of that. And then also um, you get into the area of, of more standard garden variety crimes. You know, it is a crime to sell heroin in every country, in every state in this country. Um, it's also a federal crime. So who needs to be handling that? Um, the states are, you know, they have cops, they have drug squads, they have drug dogs. They're perfectly capable of going out and finding these people and prosecuting them. So when should it become a federal case? And I think that an area where we're going to see maybe some of that conversation happening more is in the area of marijuana. We have two states now, Colorado and Washington, where uh, marijuana possession and sale within certain parameters is legal under state law and yet still illegal at the federal level. And so I think we need to have a serious conversation about how much is the federal government going to respect that state choice to uh, legalize marijuana and or at least decriminalize it to a large extent. There is a doctrine uh, in constitutional law known as non-delegation which is effectively, as far as I understand it, dead. Is there any way to get back, you think, to uh, a world in where Congress actually doesn't delegate all of these authorities to federal agencies? I, I think the temptation to regulate is, is very great at the federal level. It's a difficult temptation uh, to resist. And I think that's true uh, in the area of criminalization, too. If there's a problem, let's Let's make it a crime and let's slap a mandatory minimum sentence on it and we'll fix the problem. It's, uh, it's an easy way out. Um, and I think sometimes it, it gets around uh, some of the solutions that are probably better long term, uh, but harder to choose and harder to implement. <laughs>